All right, welcome to the Robert Show. I'm here at the Graph Summit uh, by Neo4j. Super excited to be chatting with Steve, who's the VP of Developer, Developer Relations at Neo4j. Super excited to be chatting here. I just saw your panel discussion with the customers. Great stuff, great discussion. I'm kind of excited to learn a little about that as well. But just for audience, would you like to quickly introduce yourself? Tell us more about what you're doing at Neo4j. Yeah, so um, I run the Developer Relations team. So developer outreach community. We're speaking a lot to the Gen AI community. We're at right. a different meetup every evening in San Francisco. Yep. Um, great to be here at Graph Summit. So Graph Summit is like a global roadshow that we're running. So yes. um, I gave a panel in New York on life sciences. Here we spoke with a bunch of customers about like how they're using it for fraud, how they're using it in Gen AI use cases. Right. And um, I think this is a great venue. So we're, we're at Oracle Park and I was actually at Oracle for nine years running developer marketing, and I never made it <laughs> to the park. Like, we'd have all these great parties and after events at, at Java yeah. 1 and Oracle um, Open World, but great to be here with Neo4j. And the Neo4j logo is massive. It's <laughs> massive, yeah, exactly. I was When I was kind of, you know, entered the venue, I came here, and I'm like, wow, this is amazing, having, like, um, Neo4j big uh, hoarding there. So that's there. Uh, I'm kind of also excited to learn a little about, you know, the panel discussion. I saw some great discussion, some big customers out there talking about how graph is important and, you know, how important it is now to educate the larger audience about it as well. So would yeah, you like yeah, to share so, yeah. something? Um, yeah. So we had professionals from, from Deloitte, from Palo Alto, right. from some new Gen AI startups. And um, what they all had in common is they're all longtime graph advocates yes. and graph specialists. So they really understand graph technology. And um, I think what's what's happened is that with use cases around knowledge graphs um, for Gen AI, where you can get big advantages of explainability and accuracy, you can ground your models mm -hmm. using um, knowledge graphs. Suddenly, all the folks from the graph community who have this expertise, they know how to build knowledge graphs, yes. to maintain them, to integrate them with um, Langchain, LAM index, and other LLMs. Right. Um, I think it creates a whole new field and discipline mm. where now, Becoming a graph professional as a career is really, really valuable. Hmm. Um, and the advances that are coming out of, of research and training and building knowledge graphs using LLMs, um, connecting them with um, ChatGPT and all yeah. the big models, um, I think shows a lot of promise for the whole industry. Yeah, no, I think uh, I 100% agree. That is something, you know, the talk of the town, I kind of talk to a lot of community folks out there and they're kind of excited about graph uh, and they're kind of looking at use cases around Gen AI for it and it's been, you know, it's been very productive for them as well. So I'm kind of also wanting to know a little about, because you talk to a lot of developer community out there, how are they kind of looking at this, uh, what's the excitement like and uh, how do you see it, uh, you know, developing in the near future when it comes to graph rag? Yeah, so I mean, just, just in the past, like AI is evolving so quickly, it's yes. crazy. Just in the past six months, it went from everyone was jumping on this new thing, RAG, right? Return <laughs> right. augmented generation. Yes. And it, it's good. Like, it's easy. You dump your data in a vector database. You create embeddings. You, you can immediately get, like, enterprise knowledge queries back from your LM. But quickly, industry and research has realized that it's, it's not powerful enough to mm. solve enterprise use cases where you actually need high level of accuracy, like you need to really understand things. And the market's kind of pulling and saying, hey, we need better techniques. Right. We need better ways of doing this. In general, knowledge graphs, property graphs, RDF schemas, like they, they all are really good at solving these sort of high knowledge problems. Yep. And um, I think this is the kind of the bridges the gap from people who have been experimenting and prototyping Gen AI applications, and mm -hmm. now they want to take it to production. Yeah. Right. Like there's over two thirds of the Gen AI projects are still in the prototype phase. You're right. So we, we need to accelerate things, like actually build things which are production ready. And it's a great opportunity for people to to either use their existing knowledge about knowledge graphs and graph databases, hmm. or it's a great field to learn. There's a lot of good learning resources. Events like this, Graph Summit, Very are a great place to network to learn more about this. Um, there's a lot of good free training and resources like Graph Academy. 
mm. which is free resources. So you can learn how Cypher, the query language for graph databases works, how you can build chatbots, integrating with Langchain and Llama Index, right. how you can use Python, JavaScript, other languages which developers are familiar with, and kind of like upskill. I, th I think it's all about, in, in technology, it's all about building the, your technology base, coming up with the next big wave which yeah. you can hop on, and constantly retooling and reskilling yourself so you're relevant. Talking about you know rescaling and being relevant in the space, I think the space is also kind of evolving very quickly. So wanting to know about, a little about you know how do you see it in the near future? Say in the next one to two years, how do you see the developers picking it up, but also the enterprise leaders being more interested? Like Deloitte, the customers that you all have and had at the panel discussion, how do you see it, them getting much more into the depth of it? And uh, where where do you see it going? Yeah, so I, I think today it's kind of the wild west, right? Hmm. You have all these startups which they're they're showing amazing results, but in, in kind of not real enterprise use cases and scenarios. Hmm. Yeah, you have a lot of new technologies and approaches using agentric approaches, having like multi-stage queries, right? Um, so all sorts of things to to optimize and get better results at LLMs. Now, I think kind of if we look at the next couple of years. Really, the shift is how can we take these novel approaches, right. apply them to enterprise data, enterprise use cases, which are actually the, the hard problems and yep. the real problems that we need to solve as a um, society. Yes. And productize them. Hmm. Uh, we talked about this on the panel, like deploying on like Kubernetes architecture, setting up right. observability and logging. Mm. Having um, architectures which are it's easy to create the knowledge, not only create the knowledge graphs, but maintain them. Yes. And um, I think uh, that's kind of the next stage is not only is it possible to use LLMs to solve these problems, but how yeah. can we turn these into supportable commercial use cases? Very interesting. And thanks for the, those insights, uh, Steve. I'm also wanting to learn a little about uh, What's next for Neo4j? Uh, where do you see uh, it going? How are customers, like, they're very excited, but then how do you keep up the pace? Yeah, so, I mean, I think AI is a bottomless pit of technical innovation. <laughs> so we were already, we talked about a bunch of stuff on our roadmap, but yeah. we're already doing a bunch of improvements to vector search right. in our database for making it easier to do text to cipher so you can convert your inputs mm -hmm. into actual graph database queries, um, building knowledge graphs off of using the LM and aug as an augmenter to help you build your first knowledge graphs and to yep. build out that um, initial import of your data. Mm. And I think where this all is going is like uh, real solutions that you can use on top of an enterprise grade graph database, turn into things you can actually leverage in enterprise context, mm. bring to production. And it's a great skill set for developers to learn. Yes. Because being an expert in graph technology and, and Cypher, GQL, which are the query languages. Yes. In like understanding these sort of uh, ontologies and, and knowledge graph models, it's it's an area where you can be a technical expert. Hmm. You can kind of upskill yourself and then there's a whole bunch of potential um, opportunities in the future just with this very unique skill set. Love it. Uh, Steve, I'm pretty sure our audience would also want to know where can they reach out to you? Where can they learn more about these things? I know you speak at a bunch of conferences. You are out there. You're covering the world tour as well. So yeah, if yeah, they I want mean, to if, learn more. If, if you happen to be in um, Morocco, we're going to give a keynote at DevOx Morocco or Dubai at Gitex, where I'm also speaking, yes. or um, in um, Portugal. Wow. Um, I'd be happy to meet in person. But otherwise, just hit me up on, on LinkedIn, on um, X on any of the social networks. My handle is Steve on Java because I've been a Java developer for forever. <laughs> and um, yeah, love to chat, engage with folks, and help them on their journey to become even better developers and to improve their technical skill set. Love it, and um, uh, definitely looking forward to you know keep. I will keep following you, keep learning more about, you know, GraphRag. But in general as well, you've been doing so much for the community. So thanks for that. And thanks for coming on the Ravid Show and discussing about these important topics. It's such a pleasure to host you today. Yeah, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today.